Well, aloha, everyone, from the beautiful Big Island of Hawaii. Here we are on the beach, or at least a uh, pahoehoe lava flow that goes into the water. Look at those beautiful waves. And uh, you can even see the island of Maui over there in the distance beyond the clouds. And what a beautiful day. Hey, wait, what? What's going on? Oh, yeah. Turn, turns out we're, we're not in Hawaii at all. In fact, um, we're just here in our house under a um, stay-home policy here in El Paso. But, um, hey, it's all right. But it does bring us to the next topic we want to talk about, which is waves. All right, so let's talk about waves. You've probably heard about different types of waves before. I mean, obviously, we started off this video with um, waves in the ocean. Oh, oh. If I could spell here, there we go. Uh, so waves in the ocean, uh, you've probably heard about waves in things like pool or, you know, in a lake or something like that. Uh, there's other types of waves you probably heard about too. You probably heard about waves in something like um, a slinky. Uh, you can have waves that are made up of sound, or maybe you know light is a type of wave. Or you might have even heard of people doing the wave uh, at the stadium. Now, it turns out all types of waves can be summarized in three basic types. Uh, so there are three basic types of wave. And the first type of wave that you want to talk about is going to be called a transverse wave. Now, a transverse wave is going to be a wave in which the displacement is perpendicular to the direction of travel. So an example of a transverse wave would be like a wave that you see in the ocean, or maybe the one that you might find on a slinky or something like that. What do I mean by that? Imagine you're out surfing and we take a camera with us, and at some point you take a snapshot of a picture. And do 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 here is a nice transverse wave. Now this whole wave is going to be moving this way. And um you can see that there's kind of a center here. I'll put a dotted line there through the center. Uh, some parts are higher, some parts are lower based on the, the wave in the ocean. And um, you can see here that even though it's traveling to the right, the displacement from that center is either up or down, which is 90 degrees to the direction of travel. The second type of wave we need to talk about is what we call a longitudinal wave. And a longitudinal wave is going to be a wave in which the displacement is parallel to the direction of travel. So the classic example of this is if you have a slinky and you have two people who hold the slinky, one over here and one over here. Um, if you just hold the slinky and wave it up and down, you're gonna get something like this transverse wave here. And, and you'll see those waves moving back and forth. But if rather you take that slinky and one person holds several of the rings together and then you have the rest of the slinky all spaced out like this. And then if this person over here releases one of those rings, you'll see almost this shockwave kind of thing that will propagate through that slinky. 
and you'll see it bounce back and forth and it'll boom 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 going back and forth here um, and, and you'll see this weird compression almost that goes through it. So that's what a longitudinal wave is. Or maybe you could think about it in terms of a traffic accident. Imagine a bunch of cars that are all lined up at a red light, and then somebody comes speeding really fast and slams into the person in the back. Well, the cars all boom, 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 collide with the one in front of them till the, eventually the first car at the front is pushed out into the intersection. That's kind of what a longitudinal wave is. Um, the one longitudinal wave that you should know is sound, because sound is a longitudinal wave. It tells us uh, it's about molecules, right? It's about the molecules in that sound. Um, the air molecules, they crash into each other, so your speakers crash into the air. The air crashes into more air. Eventually, those air molecules crash into your eardrums, and you hear the sound. So longitudinal wave, the important one to remember is sound, but you can also see it. It's sort of a shock wave. Uh, earthquakes have certain types of longitudinal waves in them. Uh, any, any sort of thing where things are sort of bumping into each other or compressing uh, or sending shock waves through things is going to be a longitudinal wave. All right, the final type of wave that we need to talk about is going to be what we call an electromagnetic wave. And an electromagnetic wave is just a really fancy way of saying light. We're talking about both visible light and invisible light. So the visible part of the spectrum is very small. It goes, um, it, it's, you know, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet thing. Uh, indigo's in there, I guess, somewhere. Um, but the invisible parts as well. So we need to talk about things like um, electric. Uh, um, gamma rays or x-rays or um, radio waves or infrared microwaves all of those are going to be there in the invisible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum um, now classically electromagnetism is modeled like a transverse wave actually a pair of transverse waves uh, but it's not actually doing that it's the strength of an oscillating electric or magnetic field actually both at the same time uh, so the classic way we draw this is you have an electric field that's up and down, and then you kind of have to draw into the paper and out of the paper, which is really weird, but it ends up giving you some sort of, um, shape that looks sort of like this. Um, no, I'm, I'm doing that very badly. Um, but it's something that kind of, um, where, where that's out of the paper, that's into the paper, that's out of the paper, that's into the paper, that's out. Something like that. I've drawn that very, very poorly. Um, but something close to that effect. Okay. Um, so, we have the three types of waves. Transverse, longitudinal, and electromagnetic. Let's talk about some of the pieces of that wave. Um, so, let's draw ourselves here a simple transverse wave that kind of does this sort of thing. All right. So on this transverse wave, there's a few pieces that you need to see. You'll see that there's kind of a center, kind of somewhere in there. Uh, this is going to be called the axis of propagation. And that's the direction in which this wave is traveling. So you can imagine that wave is traveling this way or that way. Think of this as, I don't know, maybe an ocean wave. And uh, we, we've gone out into the water, we're on a surfboard, and we took a picture of some waves when they looked like this. Um, so right now they're frozen in time. Here's our axis of propagation. This is going to be our y-axis maybe. It's going to be in meters. Wait, x-axis. And uh, in meters, this is going to be our y-axis. This is in meters. And this tells you how tall the wave is or how, how deep those um, bottom parts go. All right, so from the center, if the, wave, if the water was nice and calm, that's where it would be. But this wave is going up and down because there's a wave in it. These points up at the top here, all these points at the top are going to be called crests. And these points down here at the bottom are going to be called troughs. So there and there, and then these are crests here and here and here. Okay, now there's a couple measurements we need to be able to take on this. Uh, the first is if we go to the center line and we measure from the center 
to either the top, to one of the crests, or from the center down to one of the troughs. Uh, this is going to be called the amplitude. And the amplitude tells you how big or how strong a wave is. Then we're going to also measure horizontally from any point to an identical point. So maybe starting from this central crest right here to this right crest, the horizontal distance between those is going to be called the wavelength. And we're going to use the letter lambda for wavelength. Um, yeah, it's a Greek letter, but no big deal. Okay, so we have lambda for wavelength. We have the amplitude here. Um, we know the shape of it, uh, but it turns out this wave is not stuck. This wave is moving. So it's not actually where it is like this. It, it's actually constantly going to be as that wave goes past you, right? So what we need to do is we need to define a couple other things. We need to talk about how this is related to time. Uh, the first thing we need to know is what's called the period. And the period is going to be the amount of time it takes a wave to repeat itself. The amount of time it takes a wave to repeat itself. Uh, that's going to be measured in seconds, obviously, and the, we're going to use a big capital T for to represent period. So what do we mean by repeat itself? Well, do you see how the crest is lined up here? And you see there's another crest over here. So as this wave moves, it's how long does it take for this to slide over by one so that it's repeating itself? Uh, that's going to be what we call the um, period. All right, then we have something that we call the frequency. And the frequency is going to be how many times a wave repeats in one second. How many times a wave repeats in one second? Frequency is going to use a fancy looking F and it's going to be measured in the units of um, cycles per second. And actually we nickname this, uh, we give this a nickname because we're kind of lazy and we don't want to say cycles per second every time, we call them Hertz. Or we abbreviate that HZ. So if you've ever heard of megahertz, that means it's repeating itself a million times a second. Or a gigahertz is a billion times a second. Okay, so we have period and frequency. We can obviously see that those two are related based on the units, seconds, and one over seconds. Uh, cycles aren't actually really a great unit. Um, but in that case, yeah, we can see that they're inverses of each other. So frequency is equal to one over the period. And likewise, if you remember the trick from way back when, if you want to find the period, you can just flip those, and T is equal to one over F. There's one other thing that we need to talk about, and that is as the wave is moving, it's going to be moving with a certain velocity. We know that it's going to take a certain amount of time for this crest here to get way over here. So we can measure that time, and in fact that time is what we call a period. And that distance is a wavelength. So because of that, the speed obviously is equal to distance over time if it's moving at a constant speed, and that's equal to the wavelength divided by the period. Now normally you don't see it like this. Usually we use this identity here. 1 over the period is equal to the frequency. So we can rewrite this as V is equal to F, which is 1 over T, times lambda and we get this equation. Sometimes they move that around to f is equal to um, v over lambda, or maybe lambda is equal to v over f. Um, but in either case, you can see that velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Now, that having been said, we need to be careful here because velocity of a wave 
It looks like it depends on the frequency and the wavelength, but it doesn't. The velocity of a wave only depends on the medium. When I say medium, I mean the material that this wave is traveling through. So, because of that, because of that, we can see that, um, for instance, sound travels much faster in air, no, I lied, much slower in air than it does in water. In air, it travels at about 343 meters per second, and in water, it travels at something like 1,400, I, I don't remember, um, somewhere around there, um, meters per second, which is quite a bit faster, significantly faster than it does in air. It really just depends on the material that you have it in. So that's it for um, the first section of waves. All we need to do is see how those equations apply and how fast a wave is moving.